Welcome to the Sangani show where we will talk about everything health wealth and wisdom I came to the US in 1983 from Mumbai India with $10.45 in my pocket and with a big dream in my heart Now I'm a practicing cardiologist a businessman an entrepreneur life mentor and most importantly a dad I have lost some I won some But every time I lost or won, I learned even more. And my success has not been easy, but finally I made it. And my next mission is to help you do the same. Learn from my experiences and that is life is a business. Hi there. And hello. And welcome to the Sangani show. My name is I guess you guessed it. Dr. Bharat Sangani, your favorite doctor and your host. Thank you for watching our very first episode. This show will be filled with everything you need to know about health, wealth and wisdom and ultimately when you put all these things together brings happiness in life. And happiness is the ultimate goal of life, isn't it? and i will share my first hand experiences life lessons and we'll have special guest with us from time to time too uh, but first let's get to know each other a little better that means let me tell you a little bit about me first i was born in uh, what is now known as mumbai it used to be bombay uh, when i was born uh, in in the western side uh, western province of india the childhood was straight forward i was uh, part of a middle class family and my dad always felt that if there was anything that he could give to me that he wanted to make sure uh, was education and no matter what happened there was no excuse in our family not to be educated and that went very well my dad was very persistent he gave me a lot of lessons of life and as we come to know each other a better with time you will see whatever things i learned from my lesson from my dad's lessons i will incorporate into my experiences to talk to you as time goes the childhood then progressed to college and then to medical school and finally i became a, a physician a, a doctor i was a gold medalist in uh, my class out of 614 students that took the exam that year i was number 1 and that made my dad very happy uh my dad's first lesson there was that it never nothing is ever enough um to achieve things in life and he called it progressive idealism if you have any exposure to the bible for hinduism which is bhagavad gita it tells you that idealism needs to be progressive if you make an absolute idealism and make a goal which is too high then you don't get there fast enough you get disappointed progressive idealism allows you to make the first goal reach there which is in in sight and then expand the goal to the next level so my dad always believed in it so here i am um very happy that i got the gold medal in the md exam so i run to the house those days it was not that easy to make phone calls or text none of those things were were there and i met my dad and said dad i got the gold medal and he looked at me he says oh, very good uh tell me a little bit more about it and i said well i got the gold medal in a uh, subject called anatomy so he said i see so how many subjects are there so i said well there are three subjects anatomy physiology and obstructive gynec obstetric gynecology so he said so you only get the gold medal in one subject 
what happened to the other two? <laughs> you can imagine the, the look on my face at that point, right? So he said, son, you need to work harder. Uh, you need to make one gold medal is not good enough. And I was disappointed. I walked out of the room and then I had forgotten something. So I came right back in about 30 seconds. And guess what? My dad was at two phones, he both plucked to both his ears and he was calling people saying, my son got the gold medal. So he truly was extremely happy inside, but he never really let me accept that I achieved success. And I think that goes even today. My mind is never enough is enough as far as success goes. But because his progressive idealism, it doesn't even make me crazy because I, that I've not achieved something. If I make a goal, achieve there, and then expand the goal a little bit further. And that keeps your sanity uh, in, in place. So that's how you can now guess what my dad taught me when I was growing up. Then the next idea was, what do we do at this point? Now you get the gold medal. I was also on the television in the, uh, in the Mumbai television stations. And the first thing that came to my mind was, okay, let us do something that helps the humanity, the human race. And since I'm a doctor, let's go to the Mecca of medicine. And that is United States. Luckily, my brother was here. So he applied for me and then I got the visa to come to United States. And I started going through my residency and it, it was little tough to find the residency even in those days. But finally, I, I received a uh, letter which says you are accepted. I was extremely happy. And then I finished my MD exam uh, in, uh, in the United States, had a complete training in internal medicine and then cardiology in Columbus, Ohio at Mount Carmel Medical Center, which was associated with Ohio State at that time. At that point, I moved to Gulfport, Mississippi. And that's where I started my medical practice. Medical practice also went very well. Uh, at one point, we had about 70,000 patients. The population of Gulfport at that time was about 100,000. So 70,000, we pretty much had everybody and their brothers as, as my, uh, um, my patient. The practice grew very well. And we were in the 99th percentile for the size of the practice in the entire country. Just think about it, that Gulfport, which is hard to even locate on the United States map, uh, we were in the 99th percentile providing quality care to the small group of people in the far southern state of United States, which was a great accomplishment as far as I was concerned. And I felt very good that I, since I was trained in balloon angioplasty, those days, uh, that was a novelty. And I could bring that first time to that area. And that was a lot of, satis that brought a lot of satisfaction in, in my heart that I was making a difference in uh, people's lives. 70,000 patients, a uh, lot of um, accolades on, on success of uh, getting pa patients better. Then I started thinking, okay, the, how can I expand this um, God-given gift that I have received. Now I have 70,000 patients. I have a, cardio a degree of a cardiology and making a difference in, in people's lives. How can I expand this further? If you really look at my background, then basically uh, I come from a merchant family. In, uh, in uh, my family, business is in, in the blood. So it was quite obvious that the next step was to move over from providing medical care and working 24 seven to create wealth. And to create wealth, the easiest solution at that point, which I knew 
was real estate. So that's where the first real estate transaction occurred in uh, 1991. So in 1991, my mentor, Dr. Madia uh, from Ohio, had a deal that he invited me to participate in. And since he was my mentor, he had helped me when I came to United States, there was no question in my mind that that was the right thing to do. I wrote the check and, and guess what? The, the first deal uh, uh, went sour. The individual whom we had lent the money for the hotel stopped paying us the rent. And I said, well, maybe I'm better off just being a physician and not <laughs> get into all this uh, business matters, which is very different in the United States than how we normally do it in, in, in India. Well, to make the long story short, it was a great lesson. Dr. Madia, uh, my mentor, did a, a great job. We took the property over again. He fixed it uh, and then we sold it and we actually made money. I said, all right, this is not bad. Uh, it, let me tell you, whenever you want to learn something, if you're put in the worst position in the first shot, everything else looks a lot easier after that. And that's probably what happened with me. Uh, one success begets other successes and, and, and then the progress just continued. So in um, 1997, we formed a, a real estate company called Angkor Enterprises. Angkor Enterprises was formed. It was a real estate firm. And we suddenly started growing. Again, the vision was always, how can I make a large empire out of this? And the growth continued in, in 2005. Um, we also had um, institutional investors that came and they invested about $85 million in our company as an equity and that brought another $250 million of debt and that really gave us the, the power to grow. Unfortunately, uh, right after that, Katrina came uh, in our lives. Uh, if you can see Gulfport, Mississippi is location. It is right on the ocean in the southern United States. And when Katrina came, it just came right above my house, literally. And uh, the house was completely destroyed. The, the corporate headquarters was in Gulfport. And almost uh, about 87 people lost somewhere between five to 95% of their belongings or their residence. And that was not a good feeling. It was not a good experience uh, when it all started. We thought we were all finished. And it, it went so bad that uh, I was stuck in the house and we could not leave the house. And the, the church around uh, where I practiced medicine felt that uh, I was drowned or my family had passed away in, in this storm. So actually I heard my own eulogy on the radio from the church and it was good that people were saying good things about me and I said okay at least I've done something good for people and but again a, a, a very traumatic experience but again those experiences build your character and I think it helped my family and I to understand that the fragility of life is is unreal I see it every day when I and when a patient comes who was playing golf the previous day or he was running a marathon the previous day and then he's right in front of my eyes he has a heart attack and then he he dies uh, then you, you understand at that time that Life is too fragile and you really need to understand life and make use of every single second that you get because you never know when you will have to leave the earth to go, if you believe in reincarnation or whatever, wherever you are supposed to go.
Anyway, if you go fast forward, uh, this prompted us to move to Dallas, Texas, because we could not stay in the hurricane prone zone because of the investors and everybody got uncomfortable and felt that we should stay out of harm's way. And fast forward, everything went well. In uh, 2007, we moved to Dallas, Texas. Uh, and then even after Katrina, the economy just took a huge uh, gains. It just grew leaps and bounds and it helped us. Um, three days before the subprime crisis hit, uh, we were successful in uh, selling most of our assets in the mid nine figure number. Uh, and it was a successful transaction. Now we were sitting on a nine figure cash uh, in the true uh, subprime crisis era when people had no money and uh, the whole world had come to a full stop. We were just piled up with money. And at that point, we started thinking, what do we do now? Should we just go ahead and call it a day? There was plenty of money uh, that we could retire and, and have a good time for the rest of the time. We can probably go over to a beach or Bahamas or wherever and, and, and never look back. But the internal desire and, and, a, and a huge support from the family, especially uh, my wife, Smita, always came to support me and say, your desire when you came to the United States was to make a difference in human lives. You could have achieved success, financial success, even in India. Um, you were on that right path. So this is not going to make you happy uh, ultimately. So we need to continue doing what you are doing. And that's what Angkor means, right? Angkor means to repeat, to do it all over again. So here we are. We started all over again. Um, this time, just bigger and better. So the company that was only a hospitality company now became wider scale. And finally, we landed up, we landed in Israel and started uh, a public company, which was a uh, bond company, and that became a very successful offering. The bond company continued to grow. In 2020, as you are, and me and everybody else in the world knows, um, COVID came. And man, what an experience it was. Um, I think around 15th of March, uh, it just felt like the world was going to come to an end. The first thing we did was we completely stopped all the payments. We pulled back on all the expenses and we started calling everybody whom we owed money and we said, we are reevaluating everything. We are not going anywhere, but please work with us because we want to have enough cash if this can if this situation continues, we want to survive through this. And we want to pay you uh, your payments uh, in full. And that included lender and vendors. And all of these people understood. We created a 25 people committee and we would meet on the Zoom every day at 10 o'clock. And this whole team did a fantastic job and uh, I'm very happy to report here that we came out of COVID relatively unscathed. In fact, uh, we developed more and more business ideas and we are in the process of floating our second public company in Israel as we speak today. Hopefully by the time you watch this show, the company will be in, in, in existence. I really don't know that I would do anything differently uh, if I had to do it all over again, because there is no, there is no substitute for experiences. We can read as much as we want, we can watch as much as we want, but what teaches you when you go through a certain condition, it, it 
never can be replicated any other way. So I am very satisfied with all the experiences that I have had. I'm, I'm very happy to, to re sit here and report that I really would not change anything uh, today um, where, we, where, we, where I stand. So that brings the issue, then what is this show about? If essentially the successes uh, have followed the mistakes and overall it still can, can be considered a, a reasonable uh, uh, successful life, then what is the next step? And, and, and what is the purpose of this show? Well, it takes me an immense pleasure to just report to you guys that I personally believe that because of these experiences, I have figured out what is the purpose of life. Mind you, I'm not telling anybody that I am the smartest guy on the earth and I know it all. In fact, it's perfectly opposite to it. I always have maintained that I am average or slightly above average in certain fields even general population is taken care of and I'm certainly not the smartest guy and I'm certainly do not know everything. I, I sometimes I even wonder that I don't know about I don't know about anything about anything. So uh, one thing I do profess to say I have lot of, uh, lots and lots of experiences and those experiences has allowed me to decipher to understand life in the purpose. So in my mind, the purpose of life is happiness. <laughs> Again, this is not an earth-shaking discovery. You knew that and I know that. The question then comes is, what is happiness? In multiple ways, multiple people at multiple times have described happiness differently. It's a very subjective word. What I have tried to do is I have taken this subjective word and converted into an objective way to measure it. And I think that's where it's just somewhat different than what you probably have heard uh, the definition of happiness. In my mind, the happiness is defined as success in health, wealth, and wisdom of relationship. This is a kind of a three-legged stool. And every leg has to be stable and probably level ground. Otherwise, it will be tumbling and, and it, it, the happiness will not be achieved. So keep that in mind. The ultimate goal is happiness. Happiness can be achieved objectively by managing your health, your wealth, and your, your wisdom of relationship. No matter whatever anybody says or however it says, health has to come first, first, first. There is no substitute for good health. So I'll leave it right there. In our future episodes, we'll talk more about health. But the reason I felt that I could take a message about health and educate the, my fellow human beings because I have the experience, because I have a degree, because I have the backing of successfully taking care of uh, a practice that had 70,000 patients and over multiple decades. And that kind, kind of makes me an expert to talk about health without much of an argument by a lot of people. The second part is wealth. In, in our happiness model, wealth is def defined as learning to live within your means and finding ways to expand the means. This is a very different definition than if you've ever heard of wealth. But this is probably the one single dictum if you bring into your life, I would say majority of your stress will go away. It's very simple. Learn to live within your means. And that's not where the dictum ends. Then you start working harder to expand your means and then the stress will generally will stay away. There's no question that because I have been able to create a multi-billion dollar empire, uh, 
companies that and brought a lot of wealth to a lot of investors, a lot of employees, that my ability to create wealth is again easily acceptable by most people. And I can be called an expert to give this advice to my fellow individuals as to how to become wealthy under the definition that was just described. In the last piece of the achieving the perfect goals of life is the wisdom of relationship. Mind you, you, me, anybody can have 500, 1000, 10,000 addresses, contacts in our address book. What truly makes a difference how many of those contacts can truly make you permanently unhappy? And that's what matters. If, and I'm not talking about while you're driving on the street, uh, on the highway, and, and, and somebody is going at 30 miles an hour and, and um, makes you unhappy. Uh, because after you reach home, within probably a couple of hours, you will forget that episode ever occurred uh, or if the memory will become so faint that it wouldn't even matter. I'm talking about the relationships which can make you permanently unhappy. And these are generally spouses, children, parents, significant others, your significant vendors, your partners, your business partners, just this small group of people and generally, however popular you could be in this world, this probably won't come to more than 30 people. So it's probably somewhere between 10 to 30 people who can make you permanently unhappy. Isn't that amazing that with such a small number of people, I still can sit here and tell you that most of the families whom I meet, they have not been able to find a way to keep this small group of people completely happy with in the relationship. And then they constantly are struggling and unhappy because one relationship, minimum one relationship out of all these 20, 30 people is, is always going a, a different direction than, than, than you want it. It makes you unhappy. And I believe that I have found a way how to conquer this ongoing constant battle of winning in the relationships. And in one word is, is the, the answer is surrender. Now, you can surrender many ways. And, and just like my definition of wealth, the relationship definition also has little bit of a qualification to the word surrender. The surrender has to be, has to be totally out of wisdom and not out of revenge. And that should drive your surrender. And surrender should also have an end point. So as long as these two points are managed around this surrender, the wisdom of relationship will always win. And with me having a 35 plus years of uh, a marriage, so, uh, which in, in my mind is very successful, I think you will have to talk to Smita to decide if she believes it's a successful marriage or not. I hope she does and I think she does. And having children and, and friends and family that whom I cared and who can make me unhappy, I have a great relationship with all these people. Uh, not a single relationship that matters to me is, is, is sideways or, or in different ways. So I think because of my experiences, I can say I have the experience, I have the ability to be called an expert in, in managing the wisdom of relationship. So here I have a unique ability that just accidentally created, uh, not because I'm smart, it's just created because of the, my education, because of my experiences of being an expert in health, being an expert in wealth creation, and being an expert in managing the, the relationships. And that's what I said, you know, everywhere I go, I see people struggling 
to understand a purpose of life b when they understand the purpose of life they have a very difficult time to quantify it and number three is once they quantify it it's very difficult to get to the finish line so why don't i take this mission and and create a very simple method which is objective uh, to uh, help people achieve the final goal of life which is happiness and that's that's the that's the nirvana for all of us my de definition of nirvana is not going out and sitting on on the top of the alps and in in the snow and and, and kill yourself in the cold weather my my definition of uh, nirvana is live in the society that we have created live in a perfect harmony and be happy enjoy life to the maximum and then call this happiness so ladies and gentlemen i invite you guys to join me in this journey of happiness join me in the journey of accomplishing the purpose of life join me in the journey of being healthy being wealthy and being able to manage relationship and i think life will be suddenly be found as a very very sweet and entertaining for for whatever time we are here on the earth so in closing very simple please follow all the social media um, our marketing company has done a great job uh, pushing me out on social media as you can see i'm older than dirt and the the social media is not something i was raised with but i'm learning and they've done a great job so please follow us on social media if you like what you heard today and um, other way to do that is to just go to my website and it's very simple uh, for some reason i wasn't and i'm still not that famous that my website is that expensive so i could easily get it it's called www.bharatsangani.com so if you just visit that website uh, a lot of these things that i'm talking about here uh, will be there even this episode will be there on the video as soon as it is curated and will be put on the on the website and please uh, sign up for the newsletter at the life is a business that's what we have taken the explanation of life because i believe that life is a business and business is life they should not be any different individuals are individuals they should be the same whether they are at home or whether they are at business and if you approach it that way nothing there is no real distinction between the two lives and then it, life becomes very easy to live so ladies and gentlemen it was a great pleasure talking to you today and i hope that we have many many episodes for this particular event that uh, or particular phase that has started in my life and and you all become participant and let me share my experiences with you so you don't need to go through the same mistakes you don't need to go through the same pain and you only go through the path of of success and see you guys soon